The peace summit in Switzerland is over and it is now clear that this more or less officially just was a PR stunt. Uh, much as it was expected by many commentators here on YouTube and elsewhere, uh, the outcome of this of this show was that you had a lot of people gathered in one place and they all got to shake each other's hands. But if we look at the outcome document, the picture of concrete things that were reached are really, really bleak and very meager. So let's go together over what actually happened in this uh, so-called peace summit. Um, first of all, I would like to point out that as a Swiss citizen, I am quite ashamed, quite ashamed, no, very ashamed by the way this was pulled off and by the way it was reported about like Swiss media, the entire Swiss, Swiss media landscape is full of praise. How cool it was that Switzerland is now in the limelight, in the spotlight, really. Like this is our official national broadcast, the Swiss uh, uh, radio and, and, and TV broadcaster. And all they're doing is like applauding by how cool it is that so many leaders were in Switzerland. Uh, when does it happen that Switzerland is in the focus of world attention and the pictures of Mr. Zelensky and Kamala Harris arriving, you know, um, having a vice president, not the president of the United States, having the vice president, that's the big honor, right? So the uh, of the leaders and 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 the red carpet and uh, Olaf Scholz who arrived and Justin Trudeau and Macron and of course von der Leyen and the Swiss media is just so proud of Switzerland of of having so many famous people in Switzerland which uh, already shows really the level of attention that the media has been paying to what's actually happening zero zero attention to any kind of rational analysis of what's actually going on. And this is just another one of these steps toward the stupidification of Europe. But now let's look at the, the uh, was, well, what was actually achieved, because this was my big question from the beginning. What would the final uh, outcome document look like? All of these conferences and, and summits and so on, they are they they try to usually produce a, s a single document that most states can sign or sign up for or endorse in order to uh, move forward, right? So you want to get everybody on the same page. And this is what they've been working on apart from the photo op. And you know, the photo op was, 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 was quite, was intense, right? This is what they've been working toward. This family picture. This is the big outcome. And of course, Swiss media is celebrating it as a, as a huge success because you have so many delegations. But if you look at the uh, di diplomatic content of what was achieved, it is beyond meager. If we, if you think about this as the only thing that they could actually agree on what they wanted, um, it's it's really quite sad. So the the document starts. It's called the Summit on Peace in Ukraine Joint Communique on a Peace Framework, uh, published yesterday, June sixteenth. The ongoing war um, of the Russian Federation against Ukraine continues to cause large-scale human suffering and destruction. Okay, so they 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 um, agreed the ones who joined this communique that uh, the the blame is only to search uh, search within Russia and it has nothing to do with the eight years previously and the 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 exchange of fire that has already been going on and the Donbas is not mentioned and so on and so forth. Okay, fine. Framing is the Western framing. What what else was there to be expected? They recalled the two UN resolutions, General Assembly resolutions, that are condemning um, Russia's incursions into into Ukraine, and they <laughs> they applaud Switzerland. We deeply appreciate Switzerland's hospitality. <laughs> that you put that into an outcome document, that's ah, so cute. Oh my God, the Swiss must be so happy that they were playing good dog and that everybody like uh, uh, pats their back at the at the head of the good dog, having done a good good job. Um, but let me read to you a couple of the things that are actually interesting. We had a fruitful 
comprehensive and constructive exchange of various views on pathways towards a framework for a comprehensive, just and lasting peace based on international law, including the United Nations Charter. I find it interesting that they mention international law. They didn't. They do not mention the rules-based international order. This is already kind of a different, a, a different framing as what we usually hear, and I actually appreciate that one. Um, uh, we particularly uh, re um, reaffirm our commitment to refraining from the threat of use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence of any state. And I seriously wonder, because Serbia is one of the countries that signed this document, I really wonder if Serbia is going to use this in order to remind these countries that uh, re recognizing the independence of Kosovo actually runs counter this agreement. I really wonder if that was the, the, the rationale of Serbia, because the, Serb the Serbs have... Uh, have, uh, have signed up to this one. Um, of course, this is this is. Um, we all know that this will only be valid in the case of Russia and Ukraine. I mean, all of these countries will immediately forget that they that they reaffirmed all of these principles once uh, the the situation changes and once the United States will attack the next time and uh, a, a country or NATO will will invade some territory. But let's get to the heart. There's three articles that the that this uh, agreement talks about that are agreed on. Uh, three concrete things that are demanded. Now let's look at the concrete demands. We have a common vision on the following crucial, mind you, it's crucial aspects. Firstly, any use of nuclear energy and nuclear installations must be safe, secure, uh, safeguarded and environmentally sound. Okay, but that, that sounds pretty reasonable to me. Um, and it's not just in Ukraine, I mean any kind of nuclear installation. I mean, that sounds reasonable. Ukrainian nuclear power plants and installations, including the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, must, um, oper must operate safely and securely under full sovereign control of Ukraine and in line with IAEA um, principles and under its supervision. Okay, okay, interesting. Uh, fine. I mean, nuclear security is something that we want. And up until now, um, we hear sometimes that this uh, Saporizhia power plant is being shelled. Although in Western media, we always hear that somebody is shelling it, you know, and that somebody is attacking it um, while the Russians are occupying it. Right. And then the, the Western media never knows who is it who's shelling the power plant. And it's sometimes even suggested that Russia is shelling the power plant that they themselves occupy. Um, so, um, in a sense, this is actually, this is, this is um, quite welcome as it calls on everybody to leave these power plants alone, which I suppose would also mean the Ukrainians. On the other hand, it says like the Saporizhia should be given back to, uh, to Ukraine, which, okay, fine enough. Um, this is a pro-Ukrainian, um, peace summit. So, okay. Okay. So this is the first demand. Um, <clears throat> any threat or use of nuclear weapons? Uh, in the context of the ongoing war against Ukraine is inadmissible. Okay, good, thank you. Um, <clears throat> secondly, global food security depends on uninterrupted manufacturing and supply of food products. In this regard, free, full and safe commercial navigation, as well as access to seaports in the Black and Azov Seas, are critical. Attacks on merchant ships is uh, ships in port in ports and along the entire route, as well as against civilian ports and civilian port infrastructure are unacceptable. Okay, fine. Food security, no attack on, on civilian ships. I mean, no no attacks on, 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 on cargo ships. I mean, that's, that's kind of common sense. That has already not been legal, you know, under international humanitarian law, you cannot attack civilian infrastructure. That has already been a, the case. So this is just reaffirming international humanitarian law and like pointing out the importance of food security. Okay, this is this is a no-brainer. Um, food security must not be weaponized in any way. I think everybody in the world, including Russia, can agree upon that one. Ukrainian agricultural products should be securely and freely provided to inter, uh, interested third countries. And I remind you, the the Russians and the Ukrainians they had an agreement in place um, to keep these ports open. It then. Uh, was not renewed by Russia because the Russia, the Ukrainian part of the of the bargain, the Western part of the bargain, in, including the the unsanctioning of one of their of the Russian banks, wasn't wasn't fulfilled. But okay, I mean, this is something that I think that Russia has no problem with with agreeing to in principle. In principle, thirdly, um, all prisoners of war must be released by complete exchange. 
This is interesting because it doesn't say Ukrainian um, have to be exchanged. All prisoners of war. This is all prisoners of war need to be exchanged. All, all deported and unlawfully displaced Ukrainian children and all other Ukrainian civilians who were unlawfully detained must be returned to Ukraine. Okay, fine. I mean, people who have been detained and been taken away must be best be returned. But yeah, this is also like a prisoner exchange and POWs who have to be exchanged. I mean, this is also a matter of... Of course, this is again uh, international humanitarian law that is already in place, and there have been prisoner exchange changes been going on, by the way, between um, between Russia and Ukraine. It's not as if though this hasn't happened; these exchanges of POWs. Um, we therefore decided to undertake concrete steps in the future in the above mentioned areas with further engagement of the um, representatives of all parties so um in a sense the, the the here the agreement actually promises that the there would be further steps and that next time maybe you would talk to russia actually and maybe invite them as well but you know this is this is about it these are the three core points that 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 they got an agreement on and the mind-blowing thing is that not all of the 92 or 93 delegations that were in switzerland actually joined for this one it was only about 82 or 83 delegations that joined this communique. There was a whole host of countries that didn't sign this. Brazil, Mexico, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, in India and Indonesia did not sign this. I mean, this is kind of a very, very minimal consensus. And I suppose that these countries, Mexico, Brazil, Saudi Arabia and so on, did not sign because the... This communique at some points very clearly condemns uh, Russia and very clearly um, puts blame where they would prefer not to put blame in order to probably keep the Russian willingness to negotiate through them open. Um, also, Armenia, Bahrain, Thailand, Li Thailand, Libya, the United Arab Emirates, Colombia and the Vatican did not sign. Not even the Vatican <laughs> signed these documents. On the other hand, and this is even more interesting, ladies and gentlemen, let's look at the countries, the countries that signed this. Because here at the end, there's there's a list of countries. And I, re I might remind you, countries who support the joint communique. Among them, we have the Council of Europe, we have the European Commission, the European Council and the European Parliament that are listed as, as state parties to this communique. This is, it's just so dumb, ladies and gentlemen, this is just so utterly dumb. Um, so we have, and I must say, like the Council of Europe and these three, uh, these three institutions here, they're not the same. The Council of Europe, I mean, even Russia is part of the Council of Europe, although I believe it has been suspended since the, since uh, 2022. But the Council of Europe is kind of a separate thing. Um <clears throat> the 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 father and mother basically of the um of the uh, the the european um human rights charter uh, the these the the european union the european union organs the the commission i mean ursula von der leyen right the council um charles michel and the and the and the other ministers of the eu countries and the european parliament um they are listed here as parties to the agreement um, I, I don't know what's going through the mind of these people. I mean, how can any, will anyone take this kind of stuff seriously if you first sign individually and then you sign again collectively? Because most, uh, if not all, EU members are actually part of this, um, of this scheme and of this, of this declaration. But again, like this declaration is, is really, really meager. This is nowhere near what we thought it, it would be, right, um, with Zelensky's peace formula. Uh, let me just let me just emphasize that right but before this this talk um, we thought that Zelensky's peace formula would be somewhere in this in this discussion um, you know the the unconditional retreat of all uh, Russian troops and the the reestablishment of Ukraine amongst the 1991 borders and the um, return of Crimea to to Ukraine and the a war criminal tribunal against Vladimir Putin and all of the Russian officials. Um, that's the peace formula, right? And the peace formula is not in the outcome document. Not even, not even in passing. Not even, not even somewhere, somewhere hidden. It's just, it's just nowhere to be seen. We have an agreement on uh, nuclear energy should be used in a safe and secure manner. We have an agreement on do not weaponize food, and we have an agreement on, uh, uh, um. 
the uh, what was the what was the last one the last one is the prisoners of war we have a, an agreement on prisoners of war should be exchanged um i mean if this is not kind of a disaster for ukraine then i don't know what is and even this minimal agreement uh, quite a couple of uh, global south countries didn't join that because they were probably not happy with the language in, in, in deployed and the overall framing of um of this of this commitment or of this um uh, this communication and again i mind you this is not a treaty this has no force under international law this is not even soft law um this is really just kind of uh, we 80 countries we all think that x is the case um this is as meager as it gets there's really nothing in here so the the one hope I have, um, honestly, is that this would be something that the Russians can pick up, can pick up and say, like, okay, we can be, we can be fine with point number three of the POWs, and we we are fine with point number two of letting uh, of not weaponizing food. And uh, now, since we accept the two and Saporizia, we we put separate. Let's come and discuss. I mean, um, I I think. The, the, maybe the western countries actually did did a favor here to the russians i'm really looking forward to hear what the uh, what the kremlin is going to do in the next couple of days or weeks with this kind of um with with this announcement here because again there's nothing substantial in here um and the the fact that the swiss are really really proud of having done this this very important meeting um they see it as a as as a great PR win, and I, um, I interpret it rather as a uh, as a disaster actually for also for Swiss for Swiss neutrality. This is you clearly are showing that you're in, on the side of one of the of the two belligerents, right? By not even inviting the other one, but who knows? Who knows? Um, the good thing here is that this final communique is so vague and is so means so little or so nothing and that the peace formula didn't make it Zelensky's peace formula didn't make it into the agreement that maybe something's going to come out of it maybe there will be actually a next step um, in which case the, um, I might have to review my um, my judgment on this but for the for the time being it seems to me that especially from a Ukrainian perspective this is except for the photo shoot this there's really nothing um, to 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 present here, um, except that if the Russians pick you up on all of these points, then you would have an even harder time to refuse to negotiate. We'll see where it goes, ladies and gentlemen. That was my assessment of the Swiss Peace Summit. Thank you. Uh -huh.